Today I'm going to quickly show you how you can get harmony in your paintings using a limited colour palette. So I'm just using, let me see here, I've got cobalt blue, I've got alizarin crimson and I've got cadmium yellow. So these are the Liquitex soft bodied acrylics but it doesn't matter what medium you're using, the principles are the same with your colours. So I always add white to them and I generally use titanium white. You can see I've got a much bigger tub of this than I have of the other colours because I, I use it quite a lot. So there we are, have it, um, the cobalt, the cadmium and the alizarin. Now you'll notice I've not put as much red on my plate as I have the other two colours. Generally um, you don't use as much red, it can be quite strong. So when I'm beginning a landscape, the way I work, and it's not the way everybody works and these are just a few tips and things to get you going, but I look at the colours in the sky and the greys in the sky and make a decision about which blue that I'm going to use to make the clouds, to make those greys. And then I work out from there. And then if you bring that blue all the way down your painting and use it in your grasses and things in the foreground, you're gonna get that harmony without even really trying. Because of course harmony is one of the principles of design. So unless you deliberately, deliberately want to have a painting that is jarring and that is um, making a statement and being, you know, um, unharmonious, if that's a word, you really want to have it so that it feels all as one. Sometimes you'll see paintings, um, the sky and the foreground, and they don't actually, although they might be beautifully painted, they perhaps don't look like they all gel together, like it's all one scene. So to begin with, I'll make some greys for the sky. If it's a cloudy day, of course, you may want just a plain blue sky. And this is just gonna be out of my head and it's just to talk about the color mixing rather than what I'm doing with the drawing and things. So to begin with, we'll make some grey. So of course you make your grey with your three primary colours. And if you have more red and yellow, it goes towards the brown side. More blue brings it more towards the grey side. So you'll see there that's very green. So when it's looking very green, you realise you've got too much yellow. And cadmium is quite a strong colour. So we'll add more blue more red and it's a bit like making a cake or something you think oh heck I've added too much of that so I'm going to have to counter it so now I'm too blue so I'm going to have to get a little bit of that yellow back and I think I'm perhaps getting a bit more towards a grey now still very blue just a little bit more red and this is good practice just to do it by eye still quite green feeling I think perhaps it's the red that I haven't got enough of. I'm very cautious about putting the red in. You can tell that I just put a tiny bit because it is quite a strong colour. But of course you do see quite a bit of reds in the sky. If it's a very grey black day, you're going to need your colours quite strong without any white. Here we're going to put some white in and when you start putting your white in you can see better the actual grey colour and to me that's still quite a green grey that's better and you could you could do this for ages just thinking about how you want um, how dark obviously it wants to be is how much white you add but also whether that grey is going to tip towards the blue or tip towards the yellow and the red. And if you look in the sky, you'll see so many different shades of grey. There we are, it's still quite blue. Like I said, I'm just inventing some kind of a scene here using a nice big flat brush. So what I generally do is put the darkest part of the clouds in first. and then I go lighter as I go along. So I'm gonna come down to about here with my sky. And what I often do is whilst I've got that darkest gray, I'll think about where there's maybe gonna be some shadows in the foreground. So perhaps we've got a hill here and this side of the hill isn't catching the light. So I might put a shadow there and then forget about it because we're gonna be coming and painting over that later on. 
So while you've got it on the palette, it's a good way to use that paint, to not waste that colour, but to get your harmony through it. So although this colour is going to be covered up later on, maybe, some of it may be showing, those colours are going all the way through your painting and it's going to give you that harmony. So I'm going to go slightly lighter. You'll end up with a very messy paint, uh, sorry, a very messy plate after a while. And I like to work quite quickly and work wet in wet. And where I've left it, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue in there in a moment so that we've got some blue sky peeping through the clouds maybe. If you want to leave it to dry in between so that you don't get the colours merging together, that's absolutely fine. Everybody has different ways of working. So I'm going to clean my brush off now so that I can make some more colours to add to this to perhaps put some sky behind. Your skies are very rarely the colour that they come straight out of the tube. So what I'm going to do here like I said, I'm going to end up with a messy plate. I'm a very messy worker. You might be tidier than me. I don't know. So it's very rarely that dark, but it's also very rarely that blue. So you might want to add a tiny bit of white to begin with. But if it's too blue for you, too unnatural looking, it's more blue, obviously, nearer the equator than it is here in Cumbria, but that's another matter. Um, so if you think about what's on the opposite side of the colour wheel to blue, that's orange. So if you want to make it a little bit more natural, just get a tiny, tiny bit of yellow and a tiny, tiny bit of red, which is obviously orange, and mix that in. And it's just going to knock that back a little bit. Maybe I've done it too far. I'll just get a bit more blue. And you can see that's completely different to the colour that we started with there. But for this stormy sky, it's much more natural than just putting it straight off, off there. So I think this is perhaps something that beginners do quite often because they enjoy the process of drawing and the process of getting the paint on the paper, um, which is fun. We perhaps rush just to take the colours straight off from the tube rather than thinking about how we want to, to mix them. You might want to do this first, I probably should have done, but just making it up as I go along so it doesn't really matter. You can soon put some clouds back over if you don't like the way that that's gone on. And you can see that's quite a natural blue with the addition of that tiny, tiny touch of the yellow and the red to just knock it back a little. So just think about knowing um, learning the colours on the opposite side of the colour wheel because if you were doing this with grass or anything it's the same principle just take from the opposite side of the colour wheel to knock that back and make it a little bit more natural so I'm going to put a little bit of blue on the horizon and as we said before bringing those colours down into the foreground also makes it a more together kind of picture harmonious pictures so maybe there's some blue down here there might be a puddle there might be a lake it might just be on the tarmac on a road or something we don't know yet we haven't got that far down it may be covered up later but we'll use that blue down here and again that's going to bring all those colors together You'll notice that I use flat brushes for doing all my work. Um, again, that's a personal preference. I feel it makes you a little bit more abstract um, and you don't get stuck down in the detail as much as you might if you use a, a fine tip brush. So we'll perhaps think about it being maybe sunset. And we often get a lot of peachy colours in the sky. So we can mix those two together. So if you want a peach, you want to make an orange and then add a, add a little bit of white to it. Still got some blue on my brush, I'm afraid I made that a little bit muddy, but it's okay. And if you want to go slightly redder, make it a bit more sunsetty. See how little I'm putting on my brush. 
because you don't really want to be wasting paint so it's always easy to add a little bit more you can't take it out so maybe a little bit of sunset colours here maybe an extra bit of red in the centre somewhere let's uh, pop some down here so I'll do this quite a lot is just add the colour to the foreground and I'll think about that later a little bit more white I think I need to clean my brush off in a minute actually so this could be sky it could be where the land ends there could be the sea there very difficult to tell at that distance what that is it could be lake colours reflecting on the lake or anything okay so I'm going to clean that brush out now so before we leave that sky entirely let's just add a bit more detail to it so perhaps some underneath of the clouds a little bit darker in places so I've gone back and got some more of that dark grey make it a bit more stormy and then we might have some bits of clouds that you can barely see don't want to make it too dark but make it a bit more angry looking perhaps could also use that dark colour to perhaps suggest a headland or something up here it is only a suggestion we'll keep this quite abstract it'll be up to the viewer to decide what they think it is maybe and then we're going to go with some highlights so we've kind of got a highlight up here with this white and that's happened by itself and I think I'm going to leave that there because that's quite a nice um, mark making there so with highlights I don't always just use white it can be a little bit um, stark some of the nicest highlights can be with putting a little bit of yellow into your white to make a lemon colour and of course the sunset maybe just popping some of that yellow onto those clouds but don't overdo it just one or two highlights don't go putting that everywhere um, and you might want that colour again down here somewhere and we can come back later and put more down there if there's anything you don't like at this stage whilst it's wet if you want to soften things oops look what I've done I've pulled the end off my brush there if you want to soften things just with a dry brush just you can manipulate paint around a little bit pick bits of white up and put it elsewhere that kind of thing so you can have a bit of a play with this but don't overdo it you see how if you get a tiny bit of white on your pay, uh, on your brush as it's kind of drying and pop it over some of these blue areas it looks like those little fluffy clouds that are sort of I don't know barely perceptible clouds but they sort of transparent aren't they these tiny little ones and put some on the horizon because clouds aren't just a flat blanket of one um, you know they're not two dimensional they're three dimensional and there's smaller ones behind that are further away and, so, and what have you so just have a bit of a play with that but don't overdo it Need a little bit more blue there so you could spend a lot long time doing skies the last painting that I did I'll put them um, a picture of that here when I edit this um, it took me probably about a week to do it and half of that time was on the sky working on the clouds okay so we'll leave the sky now and have a think about the colors for the land coming down so I've just made space on my plate wipe some of that paint off with a damp cloth with the acrylics it's a good idea to use a ceramic plate always try and use white because your colors show more true on against the white but with the ceramic even if you leave the acrylic to dry just you know within the space of a few hours it's very easy to get off so if it's touched dry but not completely dried through um, so this evening if I come to clean this off you'll be able to clean it all white don't leave it on for days on end because then you will have problems getting it off um, so always at the end of the day when you finish painting give them a good clean okay so um, I always end up 
with no space on my plate and quite often I end up with two or three plates on the go. So coming down, um, let's imagine, I'll use a bigger brush actually, let's imagine we've got some distant fells or something. Um, you want it to be green-ish but you perhaps want it to be on the blue side of green so it's further away. Be cautious with your cadmium, I've chosen a very um, dominant yellow really. You could choose something more natural, you could go with a, a yellow ochre, uh, raw sienna is one of my favourites actually. I also like Turner's yellow at the moment, that's a lovely colour. Still a little bit on the green side, I'm just going to get some more blue. This is getting towards the end so you'll see how I'm making a bit of a splat with it. And some more red. You see mountains are more towards the purple side when they're further away and let's knock the tone back as well to push things into the distance. So we want it to be less sky-like, more land-like really, so that we know we've got to the stage where the um, The sky stopped and the hills have started, but you can't always tell, can you? Quite often where the horizon is. So as we come further forward, we want to add more, we said that was a hill there didn't we, we want to add more green, sorry more yellow to make it more green. So that this area is coming towards us and that's going further away. But like this, like I said this hill has got shadow on this side of it. I mean, you'll probably be working with an actual drawing, something to follow follow along to, a reference photograph. You can get lots of free reference photographs online. Work from your own is the best. I think when you're familiar with a subject, um, your paintings come out better because you know, they give you that feel of where you've been, is what I'm trying to say. So towards the foreground more yellow, well, let's imagine that there's more light on this side of this hill and it's dark so we've got a ridge going along here maybe. Just playing now really at this stage. Okay I'm just going to give that a rinse out. Before I carry on I just wanted to show you this little bottle I've got. I actually got these as a set of three from Amazon. I will link them down below because they're quite handy. They were only cheap um, but they've got a really nice fine mist. And so if I was going to have, go off and have a brew now or if I had to answer the phone or something like that, with the acrylics they dry out quite quickly especially as I've got the heating on here with it being cold outside. If you just give it a little spritz, um, not too much, you don't want your plate to be swimming in water but because it's a fine mist if you do it from further away and just give it a little spritz of water it will just keep those nice and moist while you have that five minutes answering the phone or whatever it is. You can also do that on your painting if you want to but do be cautious about that, that's something that takes a little bit of practice but just make sure that you aiming it from a long way away and it's just a fine mist, not you're not dripping it with water. Because there were a set of three, I used the other ones, what did I, I've got one on my dressing table to use for spraying my hair when it's all spiky in the morning to um, give my hair a spritz and the other one I used for spraying my orchids with. So they were, they were quite a handy set, so like I said I'll put those down in the link below. So I've still got lots of white paper showing, so let's have a think about what we're going to do. So I want to make uh, the distance still feel a little bit further away, so let's put some more white into that colour that we had for the land there. Let's also put a little bit of pink in, make it a bit more pinky because we've got that sunset maybe. We don't know if there's water up here or what there is, we're not entirely sure. Not 
not sure what any of this is to be honest with you but let's uh, knock some of that horizon back and get rid of some of that canvas that we can still see you could start with a ground you could start with another color underneath if you wanted to I often do I often have like a yellow underneath so whatever yellows I see in the foreground I quite often put those um, on the whole thing before I begin it's much easier working on a color than it is working on white so to be careful here that's the ridge of our hill so let's just go down there so um, a bit more yellow and let's put a little bit of red into that as well maybe it's coming a bit autumny maybe there's some grasses that have got some reds and browns in I don't know who knows quite a textured paper this so it's taking some you know you need to fill in the move your brush about a little bit to get into those um, where, we've, where we've not got the sorry I'm just kicking the stool I'm standing to work it's always a good idea to stand you move your arm more freely you move your shoulder got a bit of a stiff shoulder at the moment so I think it probably do me good to stand and move too much computer work I think that's what it is so the ridge of this Fell, whatever it is here we've decided that we're stood on by the looks of things it's going to be a little bit darker going this way and then like I said it's got this yellow going this way where the lights come in so we're just playing here so what you need to be cautious of at the moment now is not getting this too muddy so keep washing your brush out with the acrylics I tend to wash my brush out more often than I do with watercolours and I do do um, wash them out with watercolours a lot it's nice to have good fresh colours and you're not going to get that if you have jars full of dirty water so keep changing your water and keep washing your brush out and then you can keep your nice crisp colours so I'm going to make a little bit more orange we could have some grasses in the foreground that are starting to go a little bit autumny I'll pop a little bit of blue in there so that it's not too too orange because it's quite um, a muted palette at the moment I think it's nice just to put a little bit of colour up there some highlights don't put too much yellow back here unless you're going to take the viewers eye back there and that distance is going to be lost so there are different ways of getting distance in your painting I know we're talking about harmony today but for the distance the colour, obviously blues go backwards so you want more blue back there and more yellow in the foreground so that's the easy way to do it but also your tones if you think about when you're stood on the top of a fell and you're looking down and you're looking over several miles very often the tones are much more muted further away sorry I keep kicking my stool behind me Maybe a bit noisy today. There's also tractors messing around outside. They always seem to start up as soon as I start. As soon as I put my camera on to video, my husband jumps on his tractor, but uh, I can't really go and tell him off for that, can I? So again, we've got to be careful that we don't overdo this. I've got a lot of lines coming this way, so I'm just putting some lines, more verticals in, just to give us a bit of variety there. of the yellow so you see I've just taken that straight from there now just to bring everything forward and even the blue we could pop a little bit of that there like I say it's abstract we don't know what's going on here we'll leave it to the viewers imagination I feel like I want a line there so I'm just going to make something a little bit darker get the ridge of that bell there maybe there's something going off behind there as well okay so at the moment I've got a lot of lines coming this way so I'm just pop popping one or two that way so get variety get some horizontals and get some verticals going on so overall I'm quite pleased with that not too happy with the sky it's a bit mess a bit um, bit too busy is the sky but anyway that's absolutely fine 
So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you'll find that useful to think about the fact that we've just got three colours in there. So I've put, obviously put out way too much of the yellow there. So, and you can make a full landscape with just those three colours and white. And you can get so many different colours. So you've got your, your little highlights with the lemon colour there. You've got a little bit of sunset with some oranges. You've got your various blues and greens. Reds, oranges, browns. We didn't do too much brown, but you can get more brown in by putting more red and yellow than blue. And you can get a full landscape without buying loads and loads of colours. So whatever colours you've got today, in whether you're working with watercolour, of course with watercolour the white will be the white of your paper, whether you're working with oils or whether you're working with acrylics, go and get three primary colours, just three that you really like, maybe three that you've never mixed together before so that you can get some new colours, make some notes of the colours that you use and things that come out well and things that perhaps don't come out so well that you wouldn't use again and have a go at just doing an imaginary landscape or look out of the window and do what's in front of you or do something from a photograph if you want to if you don't have that confidence just to do the drawing out of your head um, I mean I didn't do any drawing but you know what I mean so just have a go at picking three primary colours and then another day pick three different ones perhaps change the yellow or just change the blue and you'll find lots of different combinations Okay, so I'm just going to show you these brushes that I have. I've got this point on the end, and you'll see in my work, I very often just, while things are still wet, I, I flick the paint around, and you can get some impressions of, of grasses and things like that, make things a bit more interesting. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there um, and say thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again soon. Like I said, don't forget that I've linked those down below in the description because I think those are really handy. So I hope you enjoy having a go at that. Do let me know how you get on in the comments below. Um, and also, if you do put your work on Instagram, if you tag me on that, I'll, I'll see it. And, I'll, and, you know, I'd really like that to see how you get on with it because it's a, a good bit of fun and it's a good learning exercise to get that harmony throughout your painting without really thinking about it because you're just using those same colours throughout. OK, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.